All right, what's going on guys? This is gonna be our, I think this is what, our third unit. We've done flag football, we've done volleyball, and now obviously we're doing tennis. Um, so you guys spent last week, you know, doing, looking at the PowerPoints and those lectures about kind of um, just an overview and a history of tennis, as well as like the accessibility of it. So like where you can go to get a racket or tennis balls or where you can even play. Um, then the next day, or maybe two days we looked at um, the, yeah, the logistics of tennis and kind of how a game is played, how we keep score, things like that. And then, of course, the last few days we looked at um, the strategy of tennis, different strategies that you can use in a game and that sort of thing. Now, of course, like we've done with the last two units, I'm going to bring you these videos about what these skills look like as well as how you can practice them at home even if you don't have a tennis racket or you don't have a tennis court that you can go to. Um, these are going to be a little bit different because I am probably going to use this racket for most of the time. Um, again, that's something that I haven't really done. I've tried to not use the equipment to kind of match what you guys you know, might have at home. But tennis is something where you guys kind of need to see what the equipment should look like in my hand. Um, also, today I was going to go to the tennis courts down in the um, you know, in downtown at the district office, but it is raining outside and I couldn't. So I am here. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our first skill. All right, so before we learn any kind of stroke in tennis or we learn to serve or whatever else, we've got to learn how to hold the tennis racket. Because if we can't hold this, if we can't grip it right, then we're not gonna be able to perform the skills in a good way. So to grip our racket, we're gonna take our dominant hand. For me, that is my right hand. Again, if you're left-handed, obviously that would be your left hand. But my dominant hand is my right hand. So that's what I'm gonna to use to grip the racket. All of this grip is called is a handshake grip. Literally, you're gonna hold the racket and take your dominant hand like you're about to give this racket a handshake and then you grab onto the bottom of it. This is literally what it looks like. So right here, you guys see, I'm gonna take my hand like I'm giving it a handshake and boom, just like that. I've got obviously my fingers here and then my thumb on this side. But that is what our grip looks like. You do hold it down here near the bottom of the racket. Um, if you have a racket that might be too big, you can choke up a little bit. Usually I hold it kind of, usually I hold it about in the middle or the bottom. Just depends on what's happening in the game and that kind of thing. But yes, that is our grip. It is called the handshake grip because you're literally giving a handshake to the racket. All right, now let's move on to our first skill. All right, guys, so our first skill we're gonna learn is the forehand stroke in tennis. This, um, if you guys remember, this is the most common stroke that is used in tennis. It's the, that one where when the ball is coming to your dominant hand side, this is the stroke you're gonna use. Um, the reason it's called the forehand stroke is because whenever you're making this, this hit, your forearm and your forehand are kind of facing your opponent. When we look at the backhand, you'll really see the difference in between the two and why it's called that. To get ready for this skill, we want to get in our, into our ready position. So just like with everything else, there's always a ready position. It's that you know, thing that you use so that you're getting ready for either a serve or a return or you know, to get that ball back to the opponent. So for tennis, it's always going to be the same thing. We're gonna have our you know, feet apart, you know, about shoulder width, have our knees bent, and you're gonna have your racket up. This is very important because when we have our racket up like this, you guys see I'm kind of just holding it up about chest level. When we have it up, it makes it easier for us to be able to get to whatever shot we need to get to. So if we need to do a forehand, my racket's already here, and I can get into that. If I need to do a backhand, my racket's here, and I can get into that, okay? If it was down here, it's a little bit tougher because now I got to bring that racket up and then make that shot. If it was here, now it's a whole lot tougher for my backhand because I got to bring it around and up and then make that shot. So it's always good and smart to be in that ready position and have that racket up. Now from here with our forehand, we're in our ready position. What we're going to do next is we're going to step with our opposite foot. So again, I'm right handed and I'm gonna step with my left foot, because that's my opposite foot. So I'm gonna step, and I'm gonna bring this racket around in this circular motion, 
Then when it gets about here, so it's kind of hip level, I want to try to pet the dog. So we're going to act like there's a dog down here and my racket is going to pet it on its back up to its head. So let me show you that one more time. So I'm going to step, bring it around, pet the dog, and then that ball, I should make contact with it at about hip, hip level in front of me just a little bit. And I'll show you what it looks like when I try to hit a ball in a second. I'm going to hit it and then bring it, follow through, and I'm going to kiss my elbow. So just to show you full speed what it looks like without a ball, this is it. So ready position, step, bring it around, pet the dog, kiss the elbow. Just like that. That follow through is very important because it helps get the ball where we want it to go. If I just stop right here, that ball isn't going to go far. Or if I do that, obviously that ball is going to go way out of bounds. So that follow through, kissing that elbow is very important. Let me show you guys one more time and then I'll hit a ball for you. So ready position, step, around, pet the dog, kiss the elbow. Let me show you what it looks like hitting a tennis ball. All right guys, so I actually can't find any tennis balls in our you know, supply closet. Um, hopefully I'll have some you know, by next year or you know, whenever the next school year starts because I can't get any right now. But we're gonna use these wiffle balls. It'll, it'll look the same, so don't worry about that. But now let me show you guys what it looks like hitting one of these. So I'm gonna step, bring it around, and then follow through. I know you guys can't see where that went, but it went exactly where I aimed it, which is right in front of me. Let me show you again. All right, so I got my ball. I'm gonna act like it's coming to me in a second. Step, bring it around, pet the dog, hit it, and boom. So that's what that looks like from a front angle. Let me give you a side angle. All right, guys, so now I'm gonna give you the side angle for the forehand stroke. Again, it's gonna be the same cues as a minute ago, but um, I'm just giving you a different angle of it. So again, I'm gonna be in my ready position, step, bring it around, pet the puppy, and follow through, it's in my elbow. Show you again. Step, bring it around, pet the puppy, kiss the elbow. One more time. Alright, ready position, step, bring it around, pet the puppy, kiss the elbow. Just like that. So that is our forehand stroke for tennis. Again, that's the most common stroke that we're going to use. Now let's move on to our next one, the backhand. So now we're going to move on to the other common stroke, which is the backhand. These are the two that you're really going to use most often in a um, tennis match or a game of tennis. But um, they are both important to know because you can't always you know, hit your forehand. Um, there are a lot of people who aren't good at their backhand, me being one of them. And a lot of times you know, they try to get around the ball so they can get to their forehand. So that not, that's not always possible. And that's going to cost you, you know, losing a point and then possibly losing the game or the match. So let's talk about our backhand. So obviously we saw with the forehand that it's that shot we hit when the ball is our, on our dominant side. Now, this is going to be the shot that we hit when the ball is on our non-dominant side. So whenever that ball is coming to my, I'm, since I'm right-handed, that's my dominant hand, my non-dominant side would be my left side. It's just the opposite. So when it comes over here to my left side, I can't always try to scoot around that ball and make that hit. But what I can do is use my backhand. So when we do our backhand, obviously the difference is the back of our arm and the back of our hand are now facing our opponent instead of the front or the fore, forearm part. So that's why it's called the backhand. The skill is a little bit different for this one. So, you guys saw with the forehand, I used one hand the entire time on my racket. For the backhand, that changes. We use two hands. So, whenever we go to do that backhand, you're going to keep your handshake hand in the same place, and you're just going to take your left hand, or your non-dominant hand, whichever one it might be, and put it above that hand. So, it's going to be non-dominant hand on top, dominant hand on the bottom. And that's going to be our grip. So again, it's the same thing at like you're giving it a handshake, but with two hands now. Our step is going to be different. Instead of stepping with our left foot or our non-dominant you know, non foot, we're going to step with our dominant foot. For me, that's my right. So I'm going to step forward with my right foot. And then now, kind of with the same um, motion as the forehand, I'm going to bring this racket. Not really, I'm not going to bring it 
you know, in that circular motion, I'm just going to kind of bring it back with my arms. And then whenever I go to hit it, I'm going to just push it forward. Now our follow through for this again is different as well. And this is the tricky part for the backhand. A lot of times with our people's follow through, they hit it and they go straight like that. What that does is when you hit it and then the follow through goes like that, this ball is going to go way to the side or it's going to go out of bounds. So you got to make sure that you hit, make contact with the ball here when the racket is straight pointing across the court versus going up and going to the side. This is the hard part about the backhand. It is a very, it is a tough shot to, um, to get down and to master, but with practice, it can be done. I'm still not perfect at mine. I mess mine up all the time, but I always try to do it. So again, just so you know what that looks like, a ready position like always, got um, both hands on the racket now. I'm gonna step with my dominant foot, which is my right, swing that racket into our follow through. This is a tough one. I am gonna to try to show you um, an example of what it looks like hitting a, a ball. So let's do that now. Uh, so what I'm gonna to try to do is just turn around and hit the ball off of um, this back wall right here. You know, it's not like the forehand where I can just drop it beside me and hit it. The backhand's a lot tougher to do that because you gotta drop it and then get your hand on the racket and then do it. So I'm gonna to try to hit it off the wall from the forehand and then get to my backhand. So I hope you guys will see that again. When you see the backhand, it'll be on this side. So this will be the backhand. This is my forehand, this is my backhand. Let me try to... All right, I'm gonna start my forehand now and then go into that backhand. Boom. 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 So that's kind of what that backhand looks like. Again, that was one of those examples where I hit it and my follow through made that ball go all the way over there. Let me try to show you one more time. So again, I'm going to start with my forehand and then make that back in the top. Alright guys, just to um, emphasize this point one more time on when you want to use each stroke. So, when I want to hit my forehand, that is when the ball is coming on my dominant hand side. So if you're right handed, so that's what I am, when that ball is coming on your right hand side, that is when you want to use the forehand. Again, that's this one, just like that. When the ball comes to our non-dominant side, or for me, my left hand side, that is when we want to use the backhand. And again, that's that stroke that looks like this. It's important to know that and to know kind of when to discern to use that because if we get caught trying to circle around the ball to get to our preferred shot, we can miss it and we could lose some points, okay? So what I want to do now is try to show you guys a little bit of a rally with myself. I'm gonna to try to hit the ball off this back wall up here and I'm just kind of give you guys an idea of what a rally and continuing that rally looks like. This is something that you can practice, you know, maybe at home or maybe somewhere where you've got concrete and um, you're able to hit a tennis ball or a wiffle ball or something off the side of your house, especially if it's brick, you can do that with no problem. But um, let me just show you guys what this would look like. All right, so now I'm gonna start my rally. I'm gonna do a forehand and backhand to kind of give you guys an idea of what it all might look like. So again, So there's just an example of what a rally would look like. We're going to get more into this um, a little bit later in a different video, but um, I did just want to give you guys kind of an idea of what I mean when I say a rally. Alright guys, so that is our first video. Again, we went over the forehand, the backhand, talked about when we want to use them and kind of um, what a rally would look like and when to use those different shots in a rally. Um, 
Tomorrow it will be our next video, and I'll tell you guys then what we're going to go over. See you then.